All right, guys, I'm gonna teach you guys a card trick, and not just any card trick, a damned good one. Yo, what's up, guys? Jason Ma, the Magician. Welcome back to the channel. It's day 117, baby. We started at zero, now we here. A couple of weeks ago, I performed a trick as part of the challenge, and I said, if you guys give the video enough likes, I'll teach the trick. And you guys did it, so I'm here to teach the trick. Now, if you guys are having a tough time remembering which trick that is, let me demonstrate it for you right now. All right, for this trick, you gotta use the two jokers, baby. Now, there's one card in this deck that always tries to ruin my tricks, and that card just so happens to be the Ace of Spades. So that's gonna be protected or guarded by the jokers, as it were. They're gonna keep him safe. And we cut it into the center of the deck, so there's no way he can interfere with my trick. And now we get a card selected at random, and it really is a free choice. In this case, you've chosen the 10 of hearts. And that card, look, you can keep your eyes on it, sits right there on the table. All we have to do to locate that card is with a quick cut like this, the card will instantly... Oh no, it's happened again, hasn't it? Yes, damn, the Ace of Spades has once again interfered with the trick, and you can see it's switched places with the two jokers in the center of the deck, the card, the ten of hearts. And that is the trick that you're gonna learn today. It's a bloomin' good one. How sick is that, man? Now this trick is like an intermediate level trick, okay? So it's not incredibly difficult, but it will require practice. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure that you smash like if you haven't already and subscribe. Also, turn on the notification bell if you wanna get more sick tutorials. And I'm gonna set a like goal of three and a half thousand. If you can get this video to three and a half thousand likes, I will teach another intermediate level trick. Otherwise, I'm gonna just stick to the easy tricks, you know what I'm saying? Now, the easiest way to teach this trick is to teach you each slight individually. So we're gonna start off with the double undercut. After that, I teach you the Marlowe's visual retention switch. And after that, we'll put it all together so that you know how it works in the routine, and you'll be able to perform this trick in no time. So without any further ado, let's start off with the double undercut. All right, now let me show you what the double undercut looks like. It's actually a card control, and it looks like this. You get a card selected at random. In this case, it's going to be the Six of Hearts, and that gets lost into the center of the deck, and I just give it one, two cuts, and when I snap the fingers, it rises through to the top, baby. And that right there is the double undercut. A nice move. Now let me show you what it looks like from my perspective. All right, I figure it's best to teach the double undercut from behind like this, so you can see everything that's happening from my perspective. So essentially the double undercut is I would take a card, I would place it into the center of the deck, I push down with the thumb, and then I'm able to bring half the packet to the top, then the rest of the packet to the top, and this would control the card to the top of the deck. So it seems pretty straightforward. Now to do it, you're gonna hold the deck like this. There's a pretty standard grip, three fingers along this edge here, one at the front to stop the cards from sliding forward, your thumb resting along this edge here. Now in this trick here, what you're going to be doing is the double undercut, where you'll just be doing it under one card like this. So what I do is I push across, I put my pinky under one card like this, and then I re-grip. I come over the top and I re-grip it like this. Now you can see here, I'm holding it with my middle finger at the front and thumb at the back, my thumb is maintaining that break, you see? So transferring from here to here is pretty natural. And then I'm just going to pull off half the cards off the bottom like this. I bring it all the way to the top. I pull off half again. I pull it back to the top like that. And that's more or less the double undercut in a nutshell. Now I do want you guys to be able to use this as a separate object. So if you ever have a spectator select a card, you can actually then take it. You're just gonna lift up with your thumb like this. Lift up with your thumb, place the card inside where you lifted it up with your thumb, and then you're gonna seemingly just push it into the middle. But when you push in, you actually push down with the thumb and you can see it lifts up the top half of the deck as I push it in like this, and it will create that natural gap again. Then I grab it the same way I did before. I take half from the bottom, I bring it to the top. The other half from the bottom, I bring it to the top. The double undercut, baby. You better use it, because it's a good trick. Now that you've mastered the double undercut, it's time to move swiftly on to the Marlowe visual retention switch. This is probably the hardest part of the whole tutorial, but just follow the instructions, man. You got this. And the beautiful thing about video is that you can actually rewind it and play it again and play it again. All right, Marlowe's visual retention switch. You would take a card like the six, you leave it on the table like that, and in that motion, you've actually switched it for a different card. Pretty sick. Now to do it, you're just gonna be holding the deck in this regular position, the same as you were with the double undercut, only your thumb is gonna reach over to the top and you're just gonna drag a card up onto this upmost edge here. 
Just drag the card up like this. Now the reason is, is that you want to get used to where that card goes to when you bring it up and pull it back down because you're going to be placing a card there in a natural motion and you want it to pretty much match exactly how it would go when you do this because if you go too much under then when you pull it down it's going to be off you know what I'm saying so you want to try and get it to that spot where when you pull it back it'll realign more or less perfectly make sense now once you learn this you can already do some cool stuff yeah where you'd like take a card you place it here then you cover it with your hand and you're able to have that card disappear that's a pretty cool thing that you can do with it but what we're going to learn is the switch now to do the switch before you place the card here you're going to actually get a break under the topmost card and to do that there are two ways that i'm going to teach you right now one is you simply push the card across dig your pinky in pull it back into alignment, you're now holding a gap. The other option, and probably the more preferred method, is that you would hold the deck in that same grip, you're going to pull down with your pinky until one card clears, and then dig your pinky underneath it like that. That's called a pinky count, it's extremely difficult to do, so if you can't do that, I recommend just pushing it across like this, yeah? Now once you've got that break, you're gonna do the same thing where you place the card on top, and essentially what you're gonna try and do is you're gonna try and drop this card as you replace this card here. And this all needs to happen. So to drop the card, it's, you know, you're just gonna drop it because initially once you get the break, you're kind of holding it in place with these fingers here and you're just going to drop it like that. So the idea is that you would like show a card, place it in that grip where you're gonna align it. And then as you align it, you're gonna drop the card underneath it. Now this needs to happen in a single motion and it's better to have your hand like in motion like this when you do it. And there's a few reasons because if you're just going to do it like this, it's going to be very painfully visible, yeah? So you can like slap the card down like that. That's one way of doing it. Where like you flick like this as you execute that move. And that'll kind of do a pretty good job at hiding the fact that you're switching a card. It looks like you're just throwing it down under the table aggressively, yeah? So you take the card, slap it under the table, you've done the switch. Now the other way that I like to do personally is I like to bring the card here, I like to pull back with my hand, I'm dusting off the area that I'm gonna place the card, then in a, in a motion of coming forward, I'm doing the move, yeah? So I'm gonna show the card here, I dust the table off, I drop the card onto the table. That's how I like to present it. So all together, you're gonna to show them the card. While they're looking at this card here, you can push across and get the break, or you can pull down and get the pinky count break, whichever one works for you. But you're gonna do it as you're showing them the card or while they're looking at the card that they've chosen, yeah? Then you're gonna place it here, dust off the table, leave the card on the table, doing the switch. And that right there is the entire move, Ed Marlowe's retention switch. Now this move, you're gonna to wanna to practice in front of a mirror or film yourself on your phone until you get it right. It's not a gimme, you know what I'm saying? It's not something you can just do in three seconds. Take some time, learn it, and then join me right now because we're gonna put it all together into a cohesive routine. Okay, so for the routine, you're just gonna separate these three cards, okay? The two jokers and the ace. Now you can use any cards for this, but you want two of the same and then one notable card, one that's easy to recognize. That's why I like these three. So first you introduce the two, this is the beginning of the routine, you introduce the two and then you introduce the idea that this card here keeps trying to ruin your tricks. You're then gonna place that face down in between the two jokers, pick everything up and place them on top of the deck. And this is where you do the double undercut. So you're just going to get a break underneath, get a break underneath the top most joker, okay? Just the one joker. And then you're gonna double undercut everything else on top of it like this. So now you should end up in this situation. You'll have a joker on the top, the ace over here, and then a joker on the very bottom, yeah? But from your perspectator's point of view, it just looks like a deck. Now when you offer them for, to pick a card, you're going to block spread, okay? And what that means is that you're not gonna spread like this because you'll reveal the joker there. You're just going to pull a big block across and then spread like this. And that way it looks like there's nothing to hide, yeah? They'll select a card from the middle. In this case, it's the two of clums. And while they're getting ready with the two of clums, you're gonna get that break underneath this card. Be the reason why I said that you could use like the pinky count is because the pinky count means that you won't flash the joker. If you push across though, you will flash the joker. So there's two ways to do it, like I said. So while they're looking at it, 
you can just push across because they're not going to be looking at you anyway. But if you're doing it to a camera, it's better to do the pinky break where you just pull down and you get the break. And then from there, you're going to place this card into the Marlowe switch position. You're going to execute the switch. And now what you do is you take half the cards, you place them to the bottom, but you leave them separated like this. Then you're going to give it a riffle like this and say with the gust of air, it'll move the card a little bit like this. And then you go, oh no, that ace, you square everything up. That ace has ruined my trick. Now when you spread the cards, you will have the selected card in between the two jokers and the ace over here. It's an impossible transposition and it's a really nice moment. I think you're gonna get a lot of joy out of this. You're gonna enjoy this. So there it is guys, the impossible transposition card thingamabooby, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you tomorrow for day number 118. Call me Bucky, lucky that I'm innocent. Uh, if I didn't have no morals, I'd be menacing.